now we need to do, we're going to look at this elapsed class. And what we want to do is we want to be able to measure the elapsed time. And we're going to say purpose track elapsed time from construction or reset. We need to store a we need to store when the elapsed class was constructed or reset. So we're going to store a boost POSIX time P time M when public we need we're going to create a static class. We're going to say, I mean, excuse me, we're going to create a static member function. Static boost POSIX time P time now return boost POSIX time mi microsecond clock. And then here we're going to use universal time. For almost all applications that are strictly within the computer, you want to use universal time. You never want to mix universal time with local time or you get weird results. So here we're creating a static method that will tell us what the time is right now. And we're going to use that in the constructor, elapsed. And I'm going to say m when constructed with now. We're also going to want to be able to reset the time. So we're going to say void reset m when equals now. And then we're going to want to be able to access it. And here, since the class is already called elapse, I think we're just going to use the paren operator. So we'll say boost POSIX time p time operator paren. This is constant. And we will return now minus m when. And it's actually not going to be a p time, it's going to boost POSIX time. Boost POSIX time time duration and operator. Pretty simple class. Let's save that. Let's bring that into date time. Let's find something interesting to measure. What we're going to do is we're going to create a member function and a virtual member function. We're going to compare the performance between the two. So if we say unsigned member 2x return to times x, and if we say virtual, virtual to x, unsigned x, return to times x, and I need to have it return something, unsigned. Then we want a function void compare virtual func performance. And compare virtual func performance. We're going to create a doubler doubler and then we're going to create a reference doubler r doubler which is going to be from that. We need to be able to run for a long enough time to get statistically valid results using name space boost POSIX time time duration min run 
seconds, five. So we take double member hertz and unsigned member loops equals zero, unsigned modulo equals 1000. And we're using this, the modulo, so that we don't have to do a time check through every part of the loop. Otherwise, I think that would dominate it. So what we're going to do is just say while member loops modulo modulo or elapsed now or, oh, sorry, we need an elapsed class too. So I'm going to say elapsed, elapsed or el elapsed is less than in run here we're going to call our doubler dot number 2x 100 we don't actually care about the return value and we're going to say number loops plus plus and while Scope. At the end of this, we're going to say that member hertz equals member loops times 1000.0 divided by elapsed dot total milliseconds. I know if you just said milliseconds, what you would get is only the fractional part of the milliseconds. So it was 15 seconds and two milliseconds would be, you'd get two, as opposed to total milliseconds, you'd get 15,002. In this case, it's five seconds. So it'd be like, it's gonna be 5,000 and some little bit of extra. We wanna do essentially that same thing, double virtual hertz. Zero while number loops, excuse me, while virtual loops modulo modulo or elapsed, and we need our own elapsed, elapsed, elapsed is less than min run. Say r doubler dot doubler dot virtual two x one hundred. We say virtual hertz. Now we say virtual loops plus plus. And then here we say virtual hertz equals virtual loops times one thousand. Now that's one thousand for there's a thousand milliseconds in a second, and we're talking about hertz, divided by elapsed dot total milliseconds. Standard CM ratio of virtual hertz to uh, of number hertz to virtual Hertz equals number hertz divided by virtual hertz. With values greater than one indicating number functions are faster. All right, let's say compare virtual funk performance, Will that thing. And 
let's run it. This takes a little bit because there's five seconds in each run. So this indicates that virtual functions are approximately 2.5% slower than plain for non-optimized code. If we change this and turn on optimization, we get a value of 3.6. Let's try one more, 3.6%. Let's try one more run just to have a basis of comparison. We're back to 2.5%. Not too bad. You get to walk away with this elapsed class. Short, it's simple, but it's pretty useful. And it brings some concrete values to exactly what is the cost of a virtual member function with respect to a plain member function. I hope you found this tutorial instructive. I hope the takeaway code is useful. Good luck.